So good morning to the people in US and good evening to the people in India. I'm Deepti Maripalli, currently studying chemical engineering in Osmania University, and I'm your host for this evening. So let's start today's session by invocation. Here is my friend Divya with today's invocation. Hello Divya. everyone. Good morning to Shavan sir and good uh, good morning to Becca Williams ma'am. This is who we are. We are a team, talented, energetic, astonishing mindsets. We can do anything and everything. We talk, we care, we respect each other. We see beauty in everything. We are connected by hearts and driven by values. We celebrate each other. We provide value to each other. We take ownership in everything we do. We have the freedom to make mistakes. We learn as we go. We are mad to make a difference. We love disruptive ideas. We make impossible things possible. We are strong to question the creation. We believe in dreaming big. If we do not dare to dream big, are we really living? Why be ordinary when we can do extraordinary? We can do it. We will do it. Let us not hope for the best. Let's, let, let us be the best. We should be driven by goals, not by egos. This is who we are. Thank you, Deepti. Thank you, Divya. Now let's take a quick look on the gratitude story. Gratitude story by Nishta. Hello, top people. Uh, one of our top ESL pillars is the attitude of gratitude. There are many stories all of us have experienced, and now top gratitude team presents exclusive gratitude gratitude stories in every top talk. Here is one of the stories which one of my friends have shared a story with us. It is a it is a story of Nivedita. I made a gratitude card to one of the KU students, which I have did, which I did not even speak. But I am just observing the way they are talking and taking initiative. So I made a card for her. She said, "Nivi, even though you did not know me personally, you made a card, and I am very happy." Then after two days, I received a card from her. I just felt like how gratitude changes a person's mindset. It gave them too a gratitude mindset. With this, I felt very proud to be a gratitude maid. by nivedita thank you thank you nishita well i'm sure that we have all played or at least heard about lego bricks in our childhood i had known someone who is a lego lover on a side note this lego is a bit different from what we have played in our childhood a heart centered person in fact driven technologist a certified scrum professional certified scrum master and a certified scrum product owner and lastly founder of the company third discipline With no more suspense ahead, today I take this privilege to introduce our speaker of the evening, Miss Becca Williams. Her beyond the work arts, as I say, are literally amazing. She encourages the unschooling path. She is an occasional coder in training, a traveler, hiker, skier, partner to Humanito, which shines light on humanness and creativity, an idea generator plus dreamer, and many more. Oh, I'm so excited for today's session. So without a, without a further ado, ma'am, you may start with your presentation. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so honored to be here, and you have done your research. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I would love to talk about just following passions, my heart work. I know when I chatted with Shravan, he mentioned that you all speak about heart work, which I love, and some of my favorite tools. We can talk about some of your passions and favorite tools as well. Does that sound good? This is me. I am Becca Williams. I have a lot of passions that I identify with, and a lot of labels as well. You heard some of those in the intro already. I've always had many passions, and it's been hard to narrow them down. I'd also like to share some gratitudes before we go too much further. I think it's incredible that we're talking face to face, but thousands of miles apart. That never ceases to amaze me, even though I've been working in technology for 20 years. Honored, inspired to be here. I, I look forward to just learning from you all. What I've seen on the website so far has been amazing, and all of the projects and books that you have out there are really inspiring. And thank you to Travan for inviting me here, and, and thank you to all the students for your communication so far and the research that you've done because they're super important to me. So that's my husband Adam, my son Taus, and my son Jasper. Our boys are nine and almost eleven years old. They also love Lego. They also love tech. Uh, my ten-year-old, my yeah, ten-year-old just 
recently built his first computer. We did that together. So that was pretty awesome. This is where I live. I'm in Buena Vista, Colorado, which is two hours west of Shravan. It's in the Arkansas River Valley. There's a lot of just natural beauty here, um, surrounded by very, very tall mountains. So we spend a lot of time outside. And I wanted to share that because I think that that sense of place is a, an important part of who we are as people. It doesn't always make it into these kinds of presentations, but my career path, this is a fun one. You saw the, all the interests I have, so this probably won't surprise you that it looks very wiggly. And there are two slides of this. Um, <laughs> at university, I studied psychology and Spanish and art. I, early in my career, worked for several nonprofit organizations or NGOs. I was hired in my early 20s as a temporary worker for three days to clean out an executive's office because they were moving between buildings. And that ended up turning into a many year career uh, that landed me in financial services at the Fortune 500 company. So you never know where opportunities are going to materialize or something that looks like it's going to be one thing turns into something completely different. Eventually, I so that, that role started as a business-facing role and then moved into IT. So that's when I became a technology worker a long, long time ago. I left that, went back to school for photojournalism, following another passion. And when I was done with graduate school, I went back to the same company. It was kind of an open door for a long time, which is a, another funny thing. You know, sometimes we think, You'll find when you start to enter the work world, when you leave one work situation, that door does not necessarily close behind you. People at companies stay in touch for a long time and networks move to other companies. So I, I think that's another just fascinating thing about working. And here are some more wiggles in the path. <laughs> I eventually became a photographer full-time. So I started my first, well, first official business in my mid twenties, but you know, I, I had an entrepreneurial mindset from the time I was very small. I became a teacher after that. Are you, are you laughing? Does this seem really bizarre? Have you talked to anyone else like this? Who's had many different kinds of jobs in their career? Can anybody relate to having all of these passions? I can relate to having yeah. these passions, <laughs> Becca, but we have we were not as bold as you were ah bold bold takes time to develop we you know sometimes we're conditioned to believe certain certain things about ourselves and we have to break free from that and be bold anyway i have i'm going to show you a sign real quick i drew this um and i think this is something that keeps me going things that feel scary or intimidating. We just have to do it anyway, sometimes. So you all have that boldness too. I, I know based on what you're doing that it's there. Uh, eventually I landed in the consulting world. That was around 2017. I was working for another company and I always had this vision for myself of the potential that I had and, and the ways that I could contribute to the organizations that I worked for. And there was always a gap. Um, I am someone, this will not surprise you based on what you've already heard, who always found job titles constraining. I don't want to be just one thing. <laughs> what do you mean I'm just X? That doesn't work for me. And so there was always a, a gap between where I wanted to be and the title that I held and the expectations that came with that. And so that along with wanting to just do more impactful values driven purposeful work led me to go and start another business and work for myself. And that was two years ago. I, I just hit two years of working for myself as a technology consultant. So uh, that was another Big, big and scary step, but it's been well, well worth it. 
So that's the path. <laughs> Here are some of the other titles I've had. And this goes back to being five years old. The very first job I had was designing some sheets for a bed for my aunt who worked for a textile company. Um, and since then, there have been a variety of roles. I have worked in restaurants. I held a number of jobs as a student. I worked in an art store, a music store, um, and I mentioned as a teacher and photographer. This list does not necessarily look like it's going to turn into a, a technology consultant, but what I've learned along the way for, for a long time, this, I don't know if you all have ever heard the term. Hey, but, uh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, uh, during this process, are you going to talk about your Peace Corps also? Um, I can. I was just going to, it's on the list. I was going to mention it briefly, but not share a whole lot of information. Yeah, so Peace Corps is something that I did after university. Um, they are around the globe. It's a volunteer service, oftentimes a, a two-year position. So I spent, I ended up spending three months in sub-Saharan sub Africa in a country called Malawi. And it was an amazing, amazing time in my life. So, so that, you only did three months, uh, Becca? Yeah, uh, I I left the Peace Corps. Okay. Um, yeah, there, 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 philosophical it's very, discussions. Uh, because it's very hard to, you know, there is so much of uh, application you have to fill, <laughs> go through the interview process, all of that. Yeah, it's it's a long process for sure. Um, and it was amaz an amazing experience. I was there as an HIV and AIDS educator and, and Peace Corps has been in Malawi since the 1960s. So one of the things that I struggled with, Peace Corps talks a lot about sustainability um, and sustainability can mean a lot of things, but one of the things that it means to me is that you are um, working yeah. with local people to create yes. models that are not dependent upon an international organization. Yes. And what I found is that that was not happening in the way that I felt good about. So, um, Wow. So it just didn't align with what I thought it was going to be. It was wow. incredible and it was a gift, but it just. Um, no, this is so, uh, that is so, you know, because there are so many international organizations under the guise of doing good, they are not doing a holistic, uh, you know, work. They are trying to completely change the, ex, you know, change the culture which has been there for thousands of years. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is, you know, which is possible. But are you willing to invest your time, energy, and effort and money for another, you know, five hundred years or so? Then yeah. you can change it. Otherwise, it is always a, a good idea to uh, collaborate with the native uh, people. Yeah. And the wow. other thing that I saw there, so I was supposed to be an HIV and AIDS volunteer. And that was only because I had a, a university degree. My university degree was in psychology. It had nothing to do with HIV and AIDS, but that qualified me as a volunteer. And I saw there were plenty of local Malawian organizations doing amazing things in this space that were really impactful from a music and theater perspective and, and other places. Uh, my college degree, my university degree, just there were better things happening locally. So that that was part of it too. Nice. nice. Yeah, thank you for asking about that. Wow, you really did many, many work, uh, many, many jobs here. <laughs> I'm, I'm 43 years old, by the way. So this looks like a very long list, but some of these were very short term assignments. Um, it, it's still a long list. <laughs> yes. My point in all of this is it's okay to have many interests. Uh, I was going to say a minute ago, sometimes those of us who have these kinds of lists and interests that are all across the board, you know, society conditions us to specialize. 
And sometimes we can be made to feel like this doesn't make sense or it's not okay. It's not okay to be a restaurant hostess and then to be a technology consultant or to do both at the same time or to also be an artist. Um, you know, we can get some negative labels for these kinds of things. And what I have finally learned in the last few years is that this is my unique value proposition. This is experience across different industries it is what allows me to see problems from all the angles to make connections that other people aren't thinking about. So go after all of your passions. It's awesome. And I will celebrate you. And there are others who will celebrate you. Um, there is something that, that helped me get to this place is a TED talk called Why Some of Us Don't Have One True Calling by Emily Wapnick. So I highly recommend that. I can still remember when I first saw it back in 2015, I was sitting at my computer at home and tears were streaming down my face because it was validation for this wild career that I had had. And one of the things that comes up in that TED talk is Barbara Sher's work on scanners. So if any of this resonates, I highly recommend checking out those two things. Nice. That brings us to my current work, which is a company called Thought Distillery. So I am working with globally distributed software and product teams, mostly with a business to business focus or B2B. And I wear lots of hats depending on the project. Sometimes it's project management, sometimes it's product management strategy. I, I've been, are you all familiar with Scrum and Agile? Yes, I yes, am. Yes, some, okay. Yes. Um, if, if you hadn't, haven't heard of Scrum and Agile, it's kind of a framework uh, or a way of, of working in the software development world to, the idea is that you're delivering value to clients on a regular basis and working very closely as a team. So I've spent a lot of time in that world. I love doing research and business analysis as well. Right now I happen to be wearing a UX architect hat, so that's fun. My other heart work, so this is kind of a side pass passion project I've been working on for the last few years is called Like Hearts Lab. And that is a sustainable, accessible, campus for social impact companies. So, you know, I'm super grateful to have been working for the last couple of years since I've gone independent and, and I still wanna have more impact out in the world. So this project is how I plan to do that. And I would love to show you a little bit more. This will lead into some of my favorite tools because as I've been thinking about this, I've also been using my favorite tools. I'm going to hit pause for a minute. Any questions or comments before we jump into like Hearts Lab? Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm Apura. Like, we just loved it. I mean, it's so connecting from the first slide that you have you have done a lot of things and th that thing like um, it, it's not uh, it's not always important to have a single life direction that is what we always talk about and that yeah. is what we dream about <laughs> you know doing many things in one life i'm so glad to hear that that's I, so this is we are in many good company are. together <laughs> yes the thing one more thing to add ma'am here uh, because every word is framed uh, framed by adding the word heart and that's made me connect how how we connect with the people is important and that's that's happened here thank you so much man yeah thank you both for your comments i think i think that's so important sometimes what i have found in my technology career especially is that sometimes we all get wrapped up in the work and the tasks in the software releases and and we kind of forget about being human especially since I, I've been working remotely for the last five and a half years. So before the pandemic as well, but as more and more communications have moved online and there are less calls and, and less, especially fewer in-person calls, if we're just interacting with someone on Slack or through email, you know, 
sometimes we all just get lost and forget about the humans on the other side of things. So I think it's a really important point. This is the Like Hearts Lab website. I've been dabbling in WordPress for a long time, so I'm I'm not a developer, but I have gotten to the point where I can spin up a new WordPress website. I can customize a theme. I can figure out the, the design that I want. So this has been really fun, and uh, I've had a number of websites over the years, but one of the things that has been important to me about this is just total transparency with what I'm doing. I want this to be something that could ultimately scale to other industries. And, you know, I believe that social impact should be core to doing business, period. I don't care what business you're in. I think there should be some sort of social benefit. And so I, I want to show the world that this can be done that there can be a successful business model and that that can be replicated. So I've got a lot about the vision here and the experience. Uh, actually, Becca, that idea which you're talking about, we are actually, we just started talking maybe a couple of months ago, we call, we call ourselves, we want to build this city called Thope City. Oh. Where the like-minded people can come together. So we are actually we are thinking about starting our designing this uh, this month. So cool! Oh, I know it is so <laughs> fun to see that they're right there, like-minded people, like-minded impact companies coming together. That's exactly we are starting our first meeting of like-minded impact companies on September eleventh. Uh, I love it. I can't no. wait to hear more. Let me show you my city then. This is what I envision for the campus down the road. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools, which is called Mural. Most of the tools that I will talk about have a free tier and you can pay to get more features, which is pretty common. Has anyone ever used Mural, Mural before? Has, have you seen this? Okay. It does a lot of things. So it has a lot of templates that you can build from. It's great for brainstorming, great for team building, um, endless possibilities. This is one of the places I go to. When I first start thinking about a new project or working with a new team, I always like to take inventory of the problem space. So right now I'm working with a wheel company, a custom wheel company, as an example, and going into that. I knew nothing about custom wheels. So I do as much research as I can and, and kind of dump all the information that I learn into something like Mural. So this tool has been really helpful for that. But it's also helpful for visualizing, for mapping out plans and that kind of thing. So I've used it to map out what I see as the Likehearts Lab campus, which may be very similar to Tope City. I, I, Again, can't wait to hear more, but this is bringing together a collection of impact focused businesses across stages, across industries. I wanna bring together artists and musicians and yoga studio and corporate social responsibility executives and R&D. Um, I want to have a cafe that we have a, a correctional facility in my town that has a, a work transition program. So I, I would, and they're developing a culinary program. Um, I would love to have something like that. So th this is the very big multi-year ultimate idea. Uh, lately, I've also been thinking about how to break that into phases. So this is really you know so interesting isn't it becca you know we on both sides of the world the same idea is getting uh, you know worked on and somehow there are seven billion people and somehow these two people you know these two groups are you know uh, we are a group of people serendipity so, <laughs> yeah serendipity right it is really amazing that we met and uh, there is so much of uh, commonality here. So pretty interesting, very yeah. nice, thank you. Yeah, please please keep me posted as ideas develop for the city. That's 
We are full of ideas. I will come visit. I know. Same here. Sometimes it's overwhelming, right? The, the yes. management of ideas. I'll, I'll show you something else in a little bit. And um, <laughs> we'll go we back would to that We would definitely but invite you to thank our Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the campus I just showed you, again, that could be many years, many years off. So I've been trying to think about how can I test this? I, right now, I'm thinking a lot about business model and you know, from a sustainability perspective, environmentally sustainable and business sustainability too. That this has to be able to sustain itself from from a financial perspective. So, I've been thinking about small tests I can run uh, and kind of mapping out. Well, what might this look like in smaller form? This is just a sketch I did on the iPad. Kind of a wild idea. Uh, there is a community about two hours from where I live. And there are a couple of entrepreneurs who have built a hotel, small hotel, um, an Airbnb really, out of a shipping container using salvaged materials. And up the road, they have a plot of land and they're planning to build attainable housing for a community on this land using shipping containers and salvaged materials. So after I toured their place, I, I was thinking, well, I could make this much smaller on a lot in my town, just between the other buildings. And I could have five shipping containers. I want it to be as beautiful from the sky as it is from the ground. I think, you know, there's, there's unused real estate opportunities when we get off the ground. So I, I think that design is important as well. Um, my town is heavily tourism based and so there's a, a shortage of housing in general um, and also a, a lot of short-term rentals so I'm, I'm looking at how this small little city lot can support itself can be an employment opportunity for someone who, who's in some sort of life transition so maybe they just came out of the correctional facility and they're facing some sort of stigma getting employment they could manage this property. They would have a place to live. Uh, socially conscious consumers would be able to stay here. They'd have access to a podcast studio, an art studio, and then there would be some sort of sustainability focused retail pop-up. So that's the small vision. And there are a whole lot of ideas in between. Any questions? I think I saw a comment. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, Becca, that's my comment. I said, consider creating a blockchain money system within, uh, your new, within your new locale you're creating. This way, financial independence is easy and also free flow of money can happen when it is your own financial system. And it is not that hard. Only thing is your money will not work outside of your locale. But yeah. within your locale, it will work. I so love that. Yeah, so that's, this way it becomes easier for you to create your locale. Yeah, that's a fascinating concept of having having your own currency within a community. Is that something that you all are exploring with Tope City? Yes, we are definitely, because that is the easiest way. Otherwise, uh, you have the big banks, where you have these government regulations, whether you have all this. So there is... Uh, Anything that happens in a uh, in a when a bank uh, increases the interest rate, everyone ex changes. But if you within your own locale, you have your own blockchain money system, you are not affected, and so that gives you a lot more power and uh, easy also to uh, do many many projects. Yeah, that relates to a book I'm reading right now. It's called Anti Anti Fragile. So you know we hear a lot about building resilient businesses and the idea of an anti-fragile or organization or entity or person or, or what however you want to describe it is that it, it's someone or something who actually benefits from uncertainty so rather than just being able to defend against it you actually thrive against volatile yes. circumstances and i think that's that's a really fascinating concept. One of the things I did was uh, when I used to go to work here, I always went to work. I realized that I have no control whether I'm going to get laid off 
get fired or whatever it is. So I always went every day saying, I'm going, you know, is I, do I even have a job? I actually went every day thinking that I have no job and went there and I said, oh, when my uh, key, cha- you know, when my badge worked, I said, oh, today I have a job. <laughs> so I was, every day I was preparing as if I had no job. So I was quite sure that I was going to be fine by the age of 36, 37. I knew even if the job was gone, I had a method to keep myself, uh, you know, going for my, take care of my family. That's exactly what you're saying, right? When there is a, when you know that there is a lot of uncertainty within the system, which is actually, there is more uncertainty than certainty in our lives. And uh, so, Thank you, uh, Becca. Can you t- uh, share the authors also about the of the book? Yeah, um, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Let's see. He also wrote Black Swan, the Black Swan, which I have not read. I read is I read that book, Black Swan. Yeah, and this it is this, a really good book. I think I'll have to go back and and check that one out. This has been out for a while. It's been out since two thousand twelve. So it's not new, but I, I feel like the concept of anti-fragile is not necessarily something that's being talked about a lot in the business world or the tech world. We Again, we hear a lot about resilience, but... Um, He's a thinker. Uh, you know, the, this author, Nasib, is really amazing. Uh, so when you... No one thought there is a black swan. Mm. Everyone thinks swan is white and they finally found one black swan in New Zealand or around that area. And suddenly it's like, so we always think something is so-and-so. And and then, you know, so always imagine the unimaginable or, you know, imagine the, you know, impossible. And then he talks about how to prepare from a financial perspective. So he's really good at it. Yeah, and I, I think what you were saying about not being sure each day that you would have a job, most people are not thinking like that. Most people think when they have a job with a company, they're safe for life. And, it, you know, especially during pandemic, we've we've seen that there's not <laughs> that loyalty that we think is there between employer and employee. It's a facade. And, and that was something that made it easier for me to quit my job a couple of years ago, you know, it was walking into the known uncertainty versus living in disguised certainty. So I, I think that's really important to mention, Travan. So Becca, I have a question and you yeah. may answer this later. I apologize if you've already talked about it. Um, but are you doing all this by yourself? Or- <laughs> Yeah, thank you. So Thought Distillery, um, my husband and I are officially both owners of the company, but I am the primary operator. So that's all me. Like Hart's Lab is also, you know, he's very much a sounding board, but so far I, I have been working on it, developing it by myself, but it cannot live forever. I'm going to have to have partners and co-founders. So I, I realize that, you know, I, I've been living in the concept phase and working on this in my free time for three years now. Um, But when it comes to actually making this happen, it's gonna take lots of partners. So my focus recently, we moved to this town six months ago. So I've been talking with community leaders and just trying to listen a lot about what's happening in this town. I don't want to build something in a silo. It must be part of the fabric of the community and it must add value in a, in a way that it will outlive me. So, uh, yes, great question though. <laughs> Thank you. Any question? Yeah. It, it, it's like a comment though. Uh, when you have said that uh, you have done so many things, I'm like, yeah, even I can do it. I mean, uh, like people always be like uh, you need to sail on one ship you can't put your legs on both the ships so uh, but then you sure that we can sail at, with one ship at a time like i be uh, i be obsessed over things every day every day i mean one new obsession every day but people be like be focused on one now if i look at you i i'm like yeah i have a very, a very much i have a life ahead i can do many things oh yeah, 
Thank you so much for saying that. I'm I'm glad that resonated. You know, I spent most of my career feeling the same pressure that you already have. Um, yes, well said. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. So it's hard. I mean, we need we need to see more examples out in the world of people doing many things so that this path this <laughs> wiggly path becomes just as normal as the straight line. Uh, I have deep respect for people who specialize in one thing over an entire career. There's value in that too. There's also value in, in trying lots of different things. So thank you for your comment. I've got a few more things I might share if that's okay from a tools perspective. Yes, ma'am. One of the other things I love is mind mapping. Have you all jumped into mind maps at all? Yeah, I see nods. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I mentioned earlier when I jump into a new problem space or start working on a new project, I like to just kind of learn as much as I can and then do a, a brain dump, really. Um, and that, that helps me then narrow focus. So just get it all out there, share with people, collaborate, and then you can focus on an area if you need to. So this is a tool called Lucid. This also has a free tier. This also has many different templates. So um, lots of really cool stuff here. And then another thing that I use is Airtable which is like Excel in the cloud, but it's also more like a database. Uh, this has a free tier too. And this, right now I'm using Airtable to kind of map out my, my revenue model. This is very early on, but this has been helpful as well. I'm gonna jump back into my talk and see what else. There are a few other tools to mention. I talked about the Lego brick, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to pull out the Lego for a minute. So I've got six two by four bricks here. They're all the same color. Does anybody have any guesses about how many different ways these bricks can be organized? Again, all one color, all two by four, and there are only six of them. Anybody have any ideas about how many combinations there might be? A lot. Take a guess. Yeah, take a guess. I mean, you're going to be wrong. I was wrong. Everybody's wrong. <laughs> Unless you've seen a very specific article. I don't know. 300? 400? Yeah. There, there is a mathematical formula. You know, I just can't make it, you know, do that right now. But I know. I know. So yeah, there's, it's probably one of those permutations which we can do six times, five times, four yes, times, yes, three sir, times, yes. two times, one. There <laughs> was the an element. article. Oh, I think no, it's probably please. six p two. I'm there guessing it's an, six p two. An article in in Time magazine. Um, I think Lego had originally estimated somewhere around a hundred million, and there was a mathematician who's like, "Well, that doesn't seem." quite right and he wrote a program to determine and then a, another a, i believe it was a high school student um, who actually wrote a different program and they arrived at the same number can you all see more than 915 million no. <laughs> is the answer like right just six of them yes and i love that because no. When we are thinking about this blue sky, thinking like building a city or building a campus or even just in our daily work, if six little plastic bricks can result in 915 million combinations, how many different ways might we solve a problem? You know, how, how many? Wow. I just, yeah, it put the, puts things into perspective. So I... I love these six little bricks. I think that's a really powerful thing. I can send a link to the article uh, later on, but it's it's fascinating. I also love that it was a high school student who validated that number. You know, I think I think that's super cool, or college college student. So a few other few other tools. I talked about Mural and Lucid. 
Slack, are you all using Slack for communications or how, how are you managing your communications uh, amongst, you're on WhatsApp, but anything else? Just WhatsApp. Yeah. Does Slack also have a few uh, free? Uh... Yep. Oh, really? Yeah, so you could create a workspace for for TOPE if you wanted, and um, you can create different channels. So it's topic-based communication. Which... Right. I have used it in my job. Yeah. So how does it like? Because we are we are nonprofit. We don't make any money. Everything. That's why we get it for free. The Slack no. is free. Anybody can create a Slack group unless it, they've changed licensing. Um, I've created a number of them for just informal groups and it, they have a message cap. So once you hit 10,000 messages, old messages start disappearing or old mm -hmm. file attachments start disappearing. So, but you can create it for, for any group. Oh, okay. okay. And 10,000 messages, depending on the size of the group, uh, you can hit that quickly or not, but it, it's kind of, it's not a bad thing to have some of those older communications disappear, I think, so. Right. How about Trello? Has anybody used Trello? Yeah, I have used okay. it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was good, definitely, on a project-based uh, communication. Yeah, yeah. We, we then somehow, you know, we went back to WhatsApp. But uh, I think some of these tools are going to be really good. Uh, you know, for future projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Becca. Yeah. So Trello, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've lost count of the Trello boards I've made over the years. This is one of the places I go to just flesh out my thinking and organize my thinking. It's, it's organized kind of in a, a Kanban style. So it could just be a place that you go to manage your tasks. You can right. have one column that's to do. Those are the things that haven't started yet. One column that's in progress and one column that's done. So when you're managing as a team, some of the projects that you're working on, you could use something like Trello for that. Right. That's That's been fun. We talked about Lego, Lucid. Miro is very similar to Mural. Uh, Becca, you will be uh, sharing this uh, PPT with us? Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, a few tools that I use for research, if I'm doing, sometimes I have to do like market research or competitive landscape kind of research where I'm trying to figure out who else is competing with the client I'm working with, what does their business look like? And, and so Crunchbase, PitchBook and CB Insights are all tools for that. What I have done is signed up for a trial of those and then get the information I need. The, the subscriptions to those are all pretty expensive. So, but, but there is an entry point for a short period of time. And then one note, uh, Trava and I th think you talked yes. about managing ideas. So this is my OneNote and I've been working in OneNote for the last six years. Um, <laughs> Ah, I, I did start with one note at one time. Okay, nice. So you it gives you a lot of flexibility there. Yeah, I I use a lot of tools and I go back and forth. And then you know I still also love paper and pens. I I make journals, so I sometimes I start analog and then go digital, but. I find that certain types of information are best suited for one or another of the tools. Nice. From a design perspective, I've been using Adobe XD lately, which has been really fun. I, I don't design a lot of user interfaces, but I've been doing some wireframing. And so that's that's been cool. Um, I mentioned, I showed you the, the doodle I made on the iPad that was using a software called Procreate. And then the noun project, this is one of my favorites. It's just an icon library. Uh, so when I'm doing my website or putting together presentations, the noun project has been oh. huge. Just, I don't even know how many different icons they have, but um, oh wow, it's, it's amazing. I love it. From a business perspective, I talked about WordPress. Um, I use a few other tools just to manage operations for my business. And then I will end with Lean Canvas, which is really useful. Let me zoom out here. 
this is a, a board that I created for myself just to kind of flesh out the Leichhardt's lab vision. And part of that is Lean Canvas, which is, this was adapted from the business model canvas. This stuff is all out in the public domain and it, it's really business model on a page. So this is another helpful thing to flesh out ideas. You know, I, when we talk about ideas, there are many, and when you log them, they multiply. You know, I, I have over the last five years since I've started keeping track, I think I'm somewhere at like maybe 150 different ideas. So some of these tools I use to test my own commitment. When you're always generating ideas, it, it can be distracting and some of them just die. Some of them other people might take action on. I'm not, I'm not protective of them. You know, I think yes. people are gonna move forward with the things that they're passionate about. So I'm not worried about anybody stealing my idea because this idea is informed by so many other people and solutions anyway. It's not really mine anyway. Um, but, but things like Trello, mind maps, even creating websites, lean canvas, when I have to structure my own thinking, it's a test. How committed am I to this idea? How much do I love it? How much do I want to move forward with it? And, and most of them, I don't do anything with. Leichhardt's lab has hung around the longest. You know, I mentioned I've been working on that for three years. Most of the other things die in one of the other phases. <laughs> they die in Trello, they die in a lean canvas, they die in, in a domain I've registered. Um, but this one has stuck around and, and that tells me that it's something I need to keep going with. So that's it from a tools perspective. Any, any favorites that you all have? Where do you like to explore and kind of document your thinking? You know, I, I do uh, almost everything on uh, WordPad. I just, uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, around 20, I realized uh, I had to get one idea a day to change the world. Mm, cool. So if I didn't have a new idea every single day, I used to feel unhappy a little. So it was my starting point of the day is like, can I come up with an idea that will change the world? So I did How that many? for me. Oh my God, I, I did that for a long time. I had so many, I still, I'm like this, for me ideas are, they just happen. I can just come up with 10 to 15 ideas in a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, I can, uh, that is my strength. I can put together, I can see things happening. I can take completely uh, unrelated things. It seems like unrelated. And then I can take those unrelated things and make it completely relatable. But if you ask me to dance or sing or something, I just can't do it. Mm. So, you know, I am, uh, there are certain things, you know, I think we all are good at and certain things we just have to enjoy others being good at. <laughs> yeah, that speaks to the broad definition of creativity as well. I, you know, I think sometimes when we talk about creativity, it's it's confined to the arts or even drawing. I've heard so many people say, I can't draw, I'm not creative. I'm like, what do you mean? You know, you've built this incredible nonprofit out in the world and look at the problems that you're, what do you mean you're not creative? No, no. Any, any other frameworks or tools or how do you all approach jumping into a new, problem or project where do you start because there are many i'm not even sure how many projects and books you all have created um so where's where's the start there's a bunch of a few of them uh, google keep as a list maker for example if i'm going to a particular city I have a talk, you know when in mumbai who are me i use omni focus it's a that's what I call the GTD, getting things done from mm. Mm. Uh, I'm a GTD uh, certified trainer, so I use OmniFocus. I use uh, Evernote. Evernote has a web clipper, so from any page you can extract the content and take it into a, a reference material. In any time, prepare for something. I just use Evernote, mm -hmm. query the tags and get the 
give the materials, minded manager and a whiteboard for a, a whiteboarding, uh, mind mapping. So a bunch of them. I love it. There are endless tools. And I'd be curious to know the collective list. What does that look like? Yes, Apurva. I was about to ask the same question. How do you jump into a new new problem or something? How do you start something new? Yeah, so I oftentimes just go to Google um, and and start asking questions, you know, with the wheel, the wheel project, for example, there were every every domain has its own language in a way, its own jargon, its own acronyms. And and so when I started joining calls for the current project, like I don't know what that means. What does that mean? And and I just start looking things up and then I start learning the language. So that's that's one way. I do as much research about a company as I can. So it's using some of the tools. I mentioned I might look at their social media, I might look at their blog to see how they're talking to their customers. Um, I start following threads and rabbit holes. I, I participated in a hackathon. I'm sure you all know the hackathon concept. Yeah, uh, so that, that was about um, people experiencing homelessness. And that had its own set of terms and policies. So it, I might be looking for one term to figure out what that means. And then that opens up a whole world of other terms. And I just start following threads and kind of putting together information. It's a lot of, a lot of exploring and rabbit hole uh, pathfinding. Curiosity, have, that's something we haven't talked about, but I, I know you all have it and I have it. I mean, that's that's really at the core of this is a curiosity. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that is the key for having many interests, many passions and exploring. Indeed. Other tools or, or questions? That's pretty much the end of my presentation. So I'm happy to just answer questions or have conversation from here and um, whenever we organically get to a stopping point. And I personally use a Samsung notes man. Since I'm an mm. amateur for all these, I mean, I just got to know all the slack and all. So uh, it like I get random thoughts in mid at midnight and I jump from <laughs> And I jump up from my bed to go like to write, uh, note down the thoughts. Like since no, uh, since I forget it by the morning to remember, I note it down in Sans on Samsung. I love that. Have you found that since you started keeping track of those ideas, do they come to you more often? Uh, actually, I'm finding it difficult to get a lot more ideas. Like hmm. I. If I think of it, I might f get a few ideas, but mm -hmm. it's been so difficult these days. Like, what's your inspiration to get ideas, ma'am? I think a lot of input for me. I read a lot. I, I follow a lot of blogs. Um, I spend time in different communities. You know, I, I by day, I work with a lot of technologists, but I'm also an artist, so I try to follow the arts as well. And it's just a whole lot of things that get mixed up in my head and come out in interesting ways. So a lot of inputs, I would say, is what leads me to, to think about ideas. But it's also inconsistent. I, I am not coming up with 10 to 15 ideas every day. I think that's incredible. You know, Maybe it's three ideas one day, and then it's quiet for a week. So it's a little bit unpredictable for me. Thank you. Hello, mom. I'm Shivani. So from the start, your smile is something which is like uh, very attractive and charming. And the way you are talking with so much of uh, enthusiasm and energy, like the frequency is uh, touching us. Thank you so much for giving such a wonderful talk, ma'am. And the things which I li loved most, loved the most is uh, when you said it's okay to have many interests. And yeah, who knows the world 
maybe waiting for that one idea you have one idea or one interest and which which might have might help many people in the world so i was very like my mind was blown seeing all the all all of the presentation and one thing another thing which i liked is uh, when you said that i don't like the the instrument or the playing thing which you which you showed us like it it has many combinations so like lego lego it is just lego bricks yeah that lego bri- bricks are like forming many combinations like more than a million thing so uh, this is how a idea can also be uh, made like one one idea can generate two more ideas or two more ideas can generate like that so there like as vinayana said it is like infinite mindset which uh, which will be created and we are so much connected uh, to your thing like we are also planning to have our top city thank you so much ma'am uh, you are just amazing thank you so thank much thank you you are amazing thank you for that heartfelt comment so i have a question and this is this comes from a total non techy um so i'm very far from it i worked in the it field but i'm i'm not a techy at all so an has listed a couple of uh, apps here and you've listed uh, a long list of apps so my concern always is with downloading apps on my phone does mm. it not slow down your phone Mm. when you download so many apps yeah i you mean event yeah go ahead i have 168 apps on my phone oh my god <laughs> so your phone so, is still in good condition working condition totally <laughs> okay <laughs> that's good to know so you're, you're in a good shape keep going <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, I I'm doing okay too. It depends on how much, you know, if you're saving all of these documents as big files locally on your device, eventually you're going to run out of space. Um if you're saving them out into the cloud, then it's it's not going to take up as much space on your device. So you, oh. you probably yeah, you're probably good to go. Thank you. Yeah. It's a great question. There's there are there's so many apps it can be overwhelming so and it sometimes i don't know where i've logged something <laughs> sometimes i can't find things I'm like was that in trello was that on a website where did i put that um, yeah i have a stack of books like that mm-hmm. i have a book for each thing and then i okay where where did i put that note or where mm-hmm. did i write that article you know yeah i love i love physical books i don't do much um I'm not reading on Kindle very often or listening to audiobooks but one of the challenges is that once you have finished a book it's only about what's up in here and it, you know if it was a 400 page book and there was that one little nugget um where was that so sometimes I write down passages from books with page numbers in journals but then I've got boxes of journals too so it, <laughs> same problem different form Hello Beckham I'm Vinay I just loved the way uh, you designed the PPT. It's so simple and so attractive. Uh, I loved it. Like uh, I, I'm very sure that like you have you have used most of the most of the apps that you were told, like the icon icon for the, from the icon library, and all. I can't and, take uh, credit uh, for this. I need I, as much as I would love to because I love this deck. It it was a free template. I think it's through Slide Carousel. So that's another tool I should mention. But thank you. <laughs> i just get excited uh, so and so much like uh, to to see all those uh, apps and extensions and and all those like uh, softwares and the website like uh, as as an answer was mentioning i i also have like 250 apps in my phone and uh, yeah it 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 it, it, it might so get, get slow a little bit uh, but it's okay no problem i just i just love uh, like uh, checking them using them and then discarding them if i don't like it i just i just love like exploring those uh, those apps and mm. and becoming like more and more productive and uh, i 
I'm just amazed to see your curiosity to try out all the different <laughs> things that were there. <laughs> and you have a, 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 and you have given us a golden list to to use for a, for a, um, for very special purposes. Good. And, uh, Thank you. Um, like yeah. And also like uh many words many words we can relate to you uh, as apurva said like uh, you have mentioned uh, some somewhere like hard work we love that and that and that is part of our top dictionary so where we where we define our own words and also uh, i just loved the way you created positions for yourself like you have, you, you have mentioned a title right like the positions that i am hide for <laughs> no they you 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 provided value in those many ways like you explored your, your, your yourself in those many ways to provide value to others that that mm. is what i could see from all those positions and uh, i loved the uh, road map of your uh, life and and i still can't believe you like you are you are in 40s <laughs> <laughs> thank are, you for that a lot many things but uh, but i just loved the way like uh, you are letting it flow and also uh like believing in yourself whenever mm. whenever you are you are going to uh, create a new thing for yourself like it's it's like a lifelong learning right so uh i just love the uh way of your your openness of your mind to to learn to learn almost every new thing while 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 you are going into the things and also your attention to detail wow mm. uh with an we got introduced to uh some mind map tools and also uh, some techniques and uh, uh, we could we could relate that, that to and uh, um, as you said some 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 I, some ideas might might die in trello some ideas might dry in google keep but if we if we just keep uh, like ideating I, ideas will be coming to us and also we we, we can we, we can venture on some of the ideas if we just stop them or if we just lose them we might be losing many things. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. Thank and I so think much. related related to what you're saying, you know, sometimes ideas can be fragile when it, when they're new, you know, all it takes is one person to say, "Oh, that's that's no good." And and you can feel very defeated. So I I think sometimes that that can be hard sharing things in the early stages um so find the people that you know are going to be supportive which i'm sure is this actually i think i read in one of your documents somewhere that or shrava and you told me when when we chatted i think you all are already talking about protecting ideas and how there aren't any bad ideas it's coming back to me now but <laughs> yeah part i i did not talk about like hearts lab for a long time really beyond close friends and family because there wasn't an uber for x kind of analogy or a 30 second elevator pitch it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and i still struggle to tell the story in a concise way of what it is but someone challenged me to just share anyway and so much valuable feedback has come to me in I mean it's vulnerable. It's hard to share this big life vision and and put it out there in the in the world because it's unconventional. Um so that that can be a scary thing, but I, I do think it's important to to do it anyway. Uh Yeah. Also a same frequency in mind only can understand all of your bigger dreams that you're going to pursue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. uh beka the uh, what you just said you know because we have been exploring this stoke city idea right i have mentioned with some and they were like you know how could you build a city right and uh, so why not first of all right why can't why can't we so it is the uh so that fragility of the idea that exists is you know so many 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 of my ideas i mean probably 1% of the i want maybe less than 1% of my ideas ever got implemented by me uh but uh and many of the ideas do actually suffer almost an instant death <laughs> uh 
and uh, i've become better at it over time to uh you know still my ideas do not go forward but at least i do not let other people trample over those ideas anymore yeah so i become good at you know uh, creating uh, some filters out there so the did you have a chance to look at that video which i sent uh, about our story becca was that the one that was almost an hour i watched a couple yeah, of videos yeah. i i don't think i i got to that one though okay. but i will i will yeah please do that is uh, that summarizes our journey and i think you will see this is this is not like um, this is you know this four year journey i would say we together the students and the alumni have put over 50000 hours to create this culture it's incredible yeah so it is uh, so when you see that video uh, it is look it will look fantastic because of the hard work that was put in the time the effort the heart that was put in for four years several you know 50000 hours and more and counting uh is all there in that so uh, definitely you know we have a collaboration you know they, we think very similarly and i think we as a team can also be uh helpful to your ideas mm. and who knows you might want to implement one of your ideas in india and uh, you know we will definitely be very very supportive and uh, you know we would love to collaborate with you i love it i have to go uh, becca uh, so but absolutely thank you very much for uh, you know joining the session and we will meet sometime in colorado springs and i'll come by also to your place sometime uh, we like buena vista very much so we will come by sometime me and my wife will probably come by sometime there soon that sounds great thank you uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, because you have something like when we can say uh, when we can say in one word you are very well articulated mm-hmm. and uh, from the from the starting uh, with your charming smile and uh, everything you connects with us was really with the heart and the word word framed from the heart really suits here and everything you told uh, was about um, and uh, i like uh i have seen uh, where you have framed in the total something like green color in one page with the some full of icons and full of ideas i guess and mm-hmm. that is how uh this life also it has infinite ways to explore yeah <laughs> thank you for making it uh, one more once again ma'am because uh here here i liked it uh, many ways because at every corner there is a gift box something like i can see maybe it is a plant something like green everywhere and uh and on the spotlight you have a heart because everything is connected with the heart mm. and everywhere you can see because the, uh, that made me very much and that every corner it's looking like yeah there is happiness everywhere where you can where if you once yeah. involved and that's why this really impressed me very much and thank you so much ma'am because uh, sustainability needs everyone and sustainability is uh, something like need of the hour and uh, framing uh, in an infinite way is something like uh, it's so cool hard story or lego and everything almost every science of life has covered in this in this chart i guess thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for your feedback yeah sometimes can i know I mean, like uh, yeah more about okay. the concept of anti fragile Yeah, I'm early I'm early in the book so <laughs> I uh I don't have a lot to say beyond what I already did but just to say a little bit more so when we when we talk about the idea of building something that's resilient if there are some sort of stressors that strike a resilient company or a, a resilient organization or a resilient thing would be able to to bounce back against those stressors and recover back to where it was basically the idea with something anti-fragile is that when it's presented with those stressors it comes back stronger and better does that make sense so it actually thrives it needs those stressors in order to get better and to, and to improve sri vidya ma'am does um, 
Sri Vidya is a leadership coach, mentor. She's a TEDx uh, speaker. I don't know if you've heard about her from Shravan. I don't um, think so. I'm yeah, writing it down. Yeah, I'll put her name, full name here. Uh, but Perfect. she has, um, she talks about that. Um, anti-fragility and there's another word, resilience and anti-fragility. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, uh, she does training uh, on that topic too. So. I will have to check that out. Thank you for the reference. Yeah, yeah I think it's a really I, interesting idea. It's not something I had thought about before. Yeah, I don't know if any of her training is available publicly. She does that. She goes to companies and does that. Mm. Uh, but you can look up uh, Sri Vidya's TEDx, TED Talk. Thank um, you. Ma'am, uh, in the beginning, I mean, when I check your profile, I saw about the unschooling path. What exactly is it? I mean, when I Googled it, it was like self-learning. Yeah. Yeah, very much self-directed learning. Um, so my kids did not go to a school. They're deciding for themselves what they want to learn each day. They did, they did go to school. Um, so until last school year, they were in a really great community elementary school, a public elementary school. And when the pandemic hit, um, they went to remote learning and I just, what I was seeing with the remote learning, everybody was doing the best that they could. And I, I have great respect for teachers and, and schools. It just seemed like they were not going to be happy going through this program. And we had been learning about unschooling for a while. And it, I mean, it's a, it's a big, very unconventional kind of scary step. And it, as a parent, it feels especially scary because I, I want to make sure my kids are learning. I don't, I don't want them to fall behind based on, you know, what they should be learning, but um, they, they drive it themselves. They choose what to learn each day. And so sometimes their learning means they're programming in Roblox or building in Minecraft. Uh, they, they spend a lot of time in, in different places like that, or they're watching, YouTube tutorials on cooking and making different recipes, or they're going out on their bikes during the day on, on a trail. So every day is different. Um, we're learning as we go as, as parents. And if they decide that they would like to go back to a traditional school structure, we will support them in that. But for now, this is working really well and, and I get to see the full spectrum of their creativity as kids and they get to have ownership in what they're learning about and go deep into certain areas. So that has been a journey. So, um, we have a gratitude card if everyone is done with their questions. Thank you Becca Williams ma'am for spending your valuable time and giving us such an amazing presentation. We just loved your excitement, infinite mindset, learning mindsets, city of thoughts, and many more. Thank you for being an amazing person by thinking about social responsibility in everything you do, ma'am. We just loved your beautiful smile and talk, talk ma'am, uh, uh, by top gratitude. Thank you so much. I, oh, thank you. My heart oh, is full. <laughs> I have a gratitude quote from Sandhya. Thank you, Diddy, and hello, everyone. And the quote is, the mind is like a flower. It does not bloom without the lights of appreciation, encouragement, and love. Thank you. Today, everything uh, went with the word heart. Everything is heart. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, the, the heart work, I mean, that, that was something that uh, I learned about from Shravan when we chatted. I learned that that was something that you all talk about and that immediately resonated. So thank you. So uh, I like, I would say that this was a phenomenal session. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I would like to thank our benevolent speaker, Ms. Becca Williams, ma'am, for, uh, for, com for coming here and uh, to shine a light on your topic and everything. And secondly, I would like to thank our dignitaries and my beloved friends for attending this session. 
on that note thank you everyone have a great day ahead thank you thank you have a great evening you. you all thank are you. incredible <laughs>